Hi everyone, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be learning about the two chemical gas laws, the Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes and Avogadro's law, the seventh and concluding part of a series on the gas laws. Please go nowhere, I'll be right back after this timeout. If you'd like to watch more of these tutorials, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification bell. If you'd also like to watch our past tutorials on the gas laws, check the link in the description. According to Louis Gay-Lussac, when gases react, they do so in volumes which are a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the products, if gaseous, at constant temperature and pressure. This law tends to explain the relationship in the stoichiometry of the reacting volumes of gases with their gaseous products. For instance, when hydrogen is made to burn completely in oxygen, at a temperature greater or equal to 100 degrees Celsius, water vapor or steam is produced according to the equation. From the equation, two volumes of hydrogen gas combine with one volume of oxygen to form two volumes of steam. This reaction obeys the Gay-Lussac's law because the gases react to form a gaseous product in a simple ratio 2 to 1 to 2. Interestingly, if the reaction occurs at a temperature less than 100 degrees Celsius, the equation becomes and the reactive volume ratio according to Gay-Lussac will be 2 ratio 1 because the volume of the product will be zero as water is liquid at temperature below 100 degrees Celsius. Avogadro's law on the other hand states that equal volumes of gases contain the same number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure. This implies that equal volumes of say chlorine and carbon dioxide at the same temperature and pressure will contain the same number of molecules irrespective of their molecular masses. This is true because one mole of every gas at STP occupies the same volume of 22.4 vm3, which is known as the gas molar volume. And also, one mole of a gas contains 6.02 times 10 power 23 molecules, which is Avogadro's number. Therefore, if two gases occupy the same volume of 22.4 vm3, then they will both contain the Avogadro's number of molecules at STP. Let's now look at some problems on the Lussac's law. Question 1. What is the volume of oxygen required to burn completely 30 cm cube of propane? This is a simple and direct question which requires a knowledge of writing balanced chemical equations and most especially writing formulae of organic compounds. To learn how to name and write the formula of organic compounds, check the link in the description. So the first thing is to write the balanced chemical equation. The formula of propane is C3H8 and since it is the complete combustion of a hydrocarbon, then the products will be carbon dioxide and water only as shown in the equation. To learn more about hydrocarbons, check the link in the description. From the equation of reaction, one volume of propane burns completely in five volumes of oxygen to form three volumes of carbon dioxide and four volumes of steam. In other words, if one cm cube of propane requires five cm cube of oxygen to burn completely, then 30 cm cube of propane will require 30 times 5 cm cube which gives 150 cm cube of oxygen. Question 2. 30 cm cube of hydrogen are sparked with 40 cm cube of oxygen at 100 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume of the residual gases after sparking. We will approach this problem using what I call the BDA sparking concept. That is, before, during and after sparking. But first, we write the equation for the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to form steam, taking the temperature of reaction into consideration. According to Gay-Lussac's law, two volumes of hydrogen will react with one volume of oxygen to form two volumes of steam. From the given parameters, before sparking, we have 30 cm cube of hydrogen and 40 cm cube of oxygen available. On reacting, that is during sparking, 30 cm cube of hydrogen will completely react with 15 cm cube of oxygen to produce 30 cm cube of steam based on the ratio 2 to 1 to 2. Then, after sparking, there will be no hydrogen left while 40 minus 15, that is 25 cm cube of oxygen, will be left and there will also be 30 cm cube of steam present. The residual volume is calculated as the sum of the volumes of the unreacted gas or gases and that of the gaseous products formed, if any. So from our analysis, the volume of the residual gases will be obtained by adding 25 cm cube of unreacted oxygen and 30 cm cube of steam, which gives us 55 cm cube. Question 3. 50 cm cube of hydrogen are sparked with 20 cm cube of oxygen. If all the gases were measured at STP, calculate the volume of the residual gases after sparking. 
This problem is similar to the last question except that the temperature of the reaction is below 100 degrees Celsius, meaning that water will be formed and not steam. And here the oxygen will be used up and not hydrogen based on the mole ratio. So from the given parameters, before sparking, there are 50 cm cube of hydrogen and 20 cm cube of oxygen available. On reacting, that is during sparking, the 50 cm cube of hydrogen requires 25 cm cube of oxygen to completely react. But since we do not have up to that volume of oxygen available, it means that the available 20 cm cube of oxygen will completely react with only 40 cm cube of hydrogen to produce 0 cm cube of water based on the ratio 2 to 1. This is because according to Gelusa, the product of the reaction formed below 100 degrees Celsius is in liquid state and cannot form a ratio with the gaseous reactant. So, after sparking, 50 minus 40, that is 10 cm cube of hydrogen will be left. There will be no oxygen left in our gaseous product formed. Therefore, from analysis, the volume of the residual gases will only be 10 cm cube of unreacted hydrogen. Question 4. The combustion of butane in oxygen or air is represented in the equation below. Calculate the volume of oxygen at STP needed to burn 60 cm cube of the butane. What will be the volume of oxygen if it is measured at 30 degrees Celsius and 568 mm mercury pressure? This is a two-in-one question that involves the applications of the Gay-Lussac's law and the general gas equation. We will first calculate the volume of oxygen needed to completely burn the given volume of butane at STP using Gay-Lussac's law and thereafter use that volume and the given conditions to determine the new volume using the general gas equation. So from the equation of reaction, two volumes of butane burn completely in 13 volumes of oxygen. In other words, if 2 cm cube of butane require 13 cm cube of oxygen to burn completely, then 60 cm cube of butane will require 390 cm cube of oxygen at STP to burn completely. Next, we apply the general gas equation. P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2, where P1 is the initial and standard pressure, which is 760 mm mercury, and P2 is the final pressure, which is 568 mm mercury. T1 is the initial and standard temperature, 273 Kelvin, and T2 is the final temperature, 30 degrees, which is equivalent to 303 Kelvin. V1 is 390 cm cube, the volume calculated at STP, and we are to determine V2. So making V2 the subject of formula, substituting the values and evaluating the equation, we obtain 579.2 cm cube as the volume of oxygen required to burn 60 cm cube of butane at 30 degrees Celsius and 568 mm mercury pressure. We will learn about the applications of Avogadro's law under the mole concepts, as it will be better understood under that context than this. So thank you for following us throughout this series. In our next tutorial, we'll be learning about the ideal gas and its properties. If you are yet to subscribe to our channel, kindly do so and turn on your notification bell to get notified when the video is published. Until then, be safe.